this week's episode of the BHB, we include topics about archery, National Pizza Day, wrestling, and so much more. What's boppin' Blackhawks? I'm Jason Brinelt. And I'm Janae Yarber. And you're, you're watching, watching the Blackhawk Black Buzz. Local fashion designer Rawa Awad will be here to speak and answer questions for the Fashion Club in room 216 on Wednesday, February 13th at 2.30. Don't forget, today at 6 p.m., the annual Powerpuff game will take place on the football field. Tickets only cost $3 to watch this timeless competition between the juniors versus seniors girls. And don't forget that if you purchase a Powerpuff shirt from Stuco, you receive free admission. See you there, Blackhawks. When it comes to robotics, there's more than meets the eye. David and Tone give us an inside look at what our award-winning robotics team is all about. From the vacuum cleaner to the business factories, robots are everywhere. By the year 2030, 38% of all jobs will be lost due to rising technology advancements. In the U.S. alone, 39 to 73 million jobs will be eliminated by 2030. In order to adapt to these changes, education will be the catalyst between our past and future. Our Revised Club is at the front line of this change. My name is Fernanda Villafana and I'm the president of robotics. I manage Team 8499. I make sure that they are doing their duties when I come in and everyone gets an opportunity to learn and have fun and meet new friends. Our Revised Club is part of the first robotic competition. First, for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. It was founded in 1989 to inspire young people's interest and participation in science and technology. Well, FIRST Robotics is where the kids uh, get together and get to make relationships with other, with other kids, either in their group or in um, other teams, actually, at a competition. So uh, the rest of it becomes science and technology and understanding what the engineering processes are, how things work, um, whether it be a servo or a motor or a sensor, um, being able to write programs to go make those things work. Teamwork exists in Robotics Club through the combination of builders, coders, and 3D modelers. Every year we have a few competitions that we go to and then hopefully we qualify for state. We have qualified for state these past two years and we did qualify this year, so we'll be going to state in February. As difficult as it may seem, this competition would be a great experience for their team members and a great chance to prove all their hard work. This upcoming competition, I actually feel very confident in this one. State is going to be a new experience for me. Hopefully, we get past state and go to the Worlds in April. Robotics is kind of this very interesting thing. It's not one of those things that kind of stands still. It's a thing that's always changing, like always this, developing, right? always new ways of solving problems are made through robotics. If you break your leg, you can have a robot that helps you do things in your life. Robotics is just getting started in the industry today. I think the future of robotics is very bright. Our Robotics Club is heading to state February 23rd. Be sure to wish them luck. This is Tone and David reporting for the BHB. Now back to the studio. News from the Career Center. Big congratulations to Johnny Gregus. Johnny won the Triple B Ethical Cadet Scholarship. Thanks to him, our JRC program received $1,000 because of Johnny's work. Be sure to congratulate him if you see him. Great job, John. For those interested in the Joaquin Bustos Math and Science program, as well as the FBI Summer Camp, your applications are due on February 15th. Ryan and Jack give us an in-depth story about the iconic math teacher, Mr. Kellehut, and his little-known archery career. Ever since Mr. Kella has been young, he never knew how infatuated he would be with archery in his future. When I first got started into archery, it was just a little wooden bow that I had gotten for Christmas. 
I went down to the archery shop, took an intro to archery class, started slinging a couple arrows, fell in love with it. So when I first had started archery, we used this thing called a finger sling, and when it would, it would always pull my finger out of its joint, I never really felt too good. Once I figured out that problem, it was all right. But then I found out I was left eye dominant, so I had to switch hands. So after shooting for two and a half years, I've been shooting left-handed for nine months now. And when I first started doing that, I ended up with a uh, softball-sized welt on my forearm because I missed with the string. Ever since I first started archery, I love learning it, and I've always been interested in people who want to learn it as well. So I went the distance and I got my level two certificate so I can officially coach. And now I'm on staff with Timber Mesa and I coach their eight o'clock line. And there's something special about having somebody try what they love and you're able to give them feedback and help them get better. Mr. Cadillac tries to take his archery to the next level. Just recently, he participated in nationals in New Mexico. Nationals is a national event in the USA archery and it happens across the country in many different states and it happens usually for the entire month of February. Each weekend there's a different event in a different place. I just got back from Albuquerque and I went up there to shoot. I finished fourth at the event and currently with a few shoots left, I'm sitting at 67th in the US. This has been Ryan Haggard and Jack Sanford reporting for the BHB. Now back to the studio. Fresh from the nest, we have 11 wrestlers who will be representing Williamsfield while competing on their out-of-state tour. Wish them the best, Blackhawks. Attention dual enrollment students. If you are taking a dual enrollment class this semester, please make sure you have them paid for by February 8th at www.cgc.edu. If you do not get them paid for, you will be dropped from the class. Please talk to Mr. Fox or contact Chandler Gilbert for more information. Tomorrow night, the annual Sadie Hawkins Dance will take place from 8 to 11 p.m. in the gym. Remember, this year's theme is Out of This World. Tickets will be $15 at the door. Please be safe, be responsible, and have fun tomorrow, Blackhawks. Um, I have a question for you. So, uh, will you go to homecoming with me? Because it will be unbearable without you. I'm going to have to pass on that. Um, can I count as community service hours? No. Hey guys, it's Jenea and Danny Quinn. And with Sadie's right around the corner, we're going to be asking people if they want to go to the dance with us. All right, are you a meal on my table right now? Because you're going to be spoiled in a few days. Sadie's? What the? <laughs> sure. Are you from Tennessee? Because you're the only 10 I see. Want to go to Sadie's with me? No. Help, I've fallen for you and I can't get up. Will you go to Sadie's with me? No. <laughs> Um, I only mess with gamer girls. No. Will you go to Sadie's with me? Sure. Nice. So, um, oh, I have fallen for you and I can't get up. Sadie's? Yes. Hey, does your left eye hurt? Because you've been looking right all day. Sadie's? Heck yeah. Mom, hey. Mama. hey, hey, I heard you were looking for a gamer girl. Um, would you like to go to Sadie's with me? Yes! Let's go! Hey, hey give me a kiss. I have a question for you. Will you go to Sadie's with me? Sure. Aw, thank you. Hey, are you a hamster on the wheel? Because you've been running through my mind all day. Sadie's? Okay. Mr. Hunter, hey, uh, is it weird to ask a teacher to say these? So, uh, on a scale of uh, one to ten, you're a nine because I'm the one you need. Sadie's? Sorry, I'm already going with Miss Johnson. You go, you go with me? I'll go with you. Let's go. <laughs> Our boys' basketball team once again dominated Campo with a 55 to 49 win and a jaw-dropping 70 to 61 victory against Castile. Be sure to congratulate them when you see them. Last week, our girls' basketball team narrowly defeated Campo Verde with a 47-46 win last Friday. They also dominated Castile 39-27 on Tuesday. They played Higley Tuesday night, and we will have an update on that score next week. With Valentine just a week away, Megan and Angie asked around the teachers about how they met their true Valentine. I'll never let go. I promise.
You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, so to get into the spirit of love, Megan and I asked a few teachers to tell us about their spouses. Story about how I met my spouse. I was finishing up my grad work and one of my army buddies was on Plenty of Fish and he told me that I should go home and try it. December 3rd, 1999, um, I was in high school, 17 years old, and back then the cool thing to do was to cruise. We were both um, leaders in our youth group at, at church. And so I signed up for Plenty of Fish and the first person I went on a date with was my spouse. So every Friday night, Pretty much every teenager in town would drive in a big loop around a couple blocks and I met my husband at a stoplight. A couple weeks later we were at one of the youth groups and we were talking about, a bunch of us were talking about going out doing some dancing afterwards at one of the country bars and so I was the one tasked with picking her up. While each love story was unique, all the teachers agreed that the bond of family was equally as important. The best memory with my spouse is the day that our daughter was born. The birth of both of our boys, I, you know, I, I talk about them all the time in, in class. When I was in labor with my fourth son and we were still debating over a middle name, I won, so. Although we love hearing them talk about their family, we wanted to know their thoughts on Valentine's Day. I think that it's a good moment to stop and make sure you really appreciate the person you are with. It's another way for Hallmark to make money. I think the gift giving and all of that is a little more extreme. If you want to get cheesy about it, I could say the Valentine's Day should be every day in your relationship. Finally, we asked if they had any advice for young high school couples. Despite the fact that my relationship with my husband started when I was in high school, I think that my advice for high school students in relationships would be to use them as a learning experience to figure out what it is that you want in a future partner for life. I think it's true that love comes when you least expect it, so wait for your moment. Reporting for the BHB, this has been Megan and Angie. Now back to the studio. AP test order forms are now available in the bookstore or from your AP teachers. Last day to pay will be March 1st. Please go see the bookstore if you have any questions. Who doesn't love pizza? But the real question is, who knows the difference between pizza? Our very own Brandon, Juan, and Owen set up a taste test to get to the bottom of this question. Well, that's where I see things just a little differently. Contractor, no. I will not bow to any sponsor. Guess what, Blackhawks? It's National Pizza Day tomorrow, so your very own BHP team went out and researched some popular pies nearby. And what better way to find out which pizza is the best than a blindfolded taste test? Pizza time. <laughs> Feels on the lighter side. Very uh, thin. This one has a really round crust and it's really thin. In terms of out of 10, that's all eight. Very uh, smoky flavor to it. Lots of sauce. Uh, give this maybe like a, a seven out of 10. I'm gonna say Papa John's for this one. Very, very sturdy crust. You already know what it is before you've been bitten into it. I already can tell. I tend to say there is a, it's like a seven, there's not enough sauce. I think this is Little Caesars. It was like a, almost a six out of 10. I'll go with. They say it's hot and ready, but yeah, this is this is cold. So Little Caesars, I guess one like a like a six or a five. See, a lot heavier, floury. It's really dusty at the bottom. Out of ten, that's like a six. I'll give this like a 7 out of 10. So this one's a good 7. That is Domino's. I think this is Papa John's. I'd say this is Papa John's. Ooh, very droopy. Really flimsy. Nice and thick. 
out of 10, there's a solid 8 as well. Give this one like an 8 out of 10. 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10. I'm confident this is Pizza Hut. I think this is Pizza Hut. I think this is Pizza Hut. You heard it here first, folks. Pizza Hut is the number one pick. So on Saturday, pick the pizza that'll be the most bang for your buck. This has been Brandon Bybee, Juan Hernandez, and Owen Williams reporting for the BHB. Now back to the studio. Our boys soccer team lost to both Castile and Campo Verde last week. They played Higley Monday night and came out with a 2-1 win. Awesome job, Blackhawks. Our girls soccer team unfortunately lost to both Castile and Campo last week after giving them a run for their money. You'll get them next time, Blackhawks. With February being the month of love, our very own Hunter set out on his own segment involving candy hearts. Sweethearts, a sweet and adorable treat that has become a tradition to the Valentine's season. Sadly though, they won't be appearing on shelves this year, as Neko, a company that has made sweethearts since 1886, has shut down. I got the chance to interview some students to get their input on this sugarless situation. Candy hearts, I, I don't really care about candy hearts. I mostly just got actual like Skittles, Airheads, and like Twix or something. I never really got candy hearts. I love some Quinn because it's almost like a tradition to Valentine's Day, always have the option to buy someone special something sweet for them. It, it makes me real sad because I have a lot of fond memories of candy hearts with a lot of my friends. It makes me sad because the little messages are so cute and like my mom gets them for me every year. Personally, they're not going to be in the season. It's, it's not going to be a regular Valentine's Day without them, you know? That's kind of like the symbol of Valentine's Day and without them, it's just going to be different. And what are the season itself? How will the shortage of candy hearts affect the season? I think it won't really affect the season too much just because mostly it's about love. At this point, if you give like, if you give your Valentine candy hearts, I don't think they'll be that impressed with you. Hopefully not too much, because the season's about love, and if you truly love someone, then you shouldn't have just candy to show someone you love. It's honestly, the season's just about love. It's not really about the candy. I mean, yeah, like everyone gets candy hearts. It's like part of Valentine's Day. I don't think it'll have a direct effect. It'll just kind of be like one of those things, like it's a loss that we'll all like wish we still had, but it'll still go on, yeah. And there you have it. Though Kenny Hearts aren't in this season, love still fills the air this Valentine's season. Reporting for the BHB, I'm Hunter McKenzie. Now back to the studio. Juniors, don't forget the ACT is February 20th. The clock is ticking, so be sure to start studying with a free study guide in the Career Center. Alex Lamont is no ordinary kid. With his deep-seated passion for music, it only made sense for our very own Logan and Matthew to give us the origin story of how Alex became a student turned disc junkie. Alex Lamont is a student here at Williamsfield High School and enjoys things like video games and listening to EDM. But most importantly, he's found a passion for being a DJ. I asked Alex for an inside look at how it all started. I wanted to be a DJ because um, it's just, you know, you watch videos of people going out to like clubs or festivals and playing for, you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of people. And it's just, it just looks very fun to do. Alex loves many things about being a DJ, but there's one thing that really pulls him in. The best part of being a DJ is getting paid for playing music and entertaining people because while everybody else is doing some nine to five job, hating your life, I'm, I'm getting paid to play music. Alex still encourages people with a passion for music to pursue becoming a DJ and decided to give us some inside advice on what it takes. Go get your own mixer, your laptop, preferably a Mac. Um, go on YouTube, learn how to mix. People will tell you how to do it. And start putting yourself out there, go to your local promoters and say, hey, can I you know, DJ set at your restaurant or whatever. Amongst Alex's many goals, he has one thing that he wants to do in particular before he leaves high school. He wants to DJ next year's homecoming and prom. Let me DJ next year's homecoming and prom. Mr. Ray, you know who I am, so hit me up, find me in one of my classes, we can work something out. Let's look forward to seeing Alex DJing future parties and events near you. This has been Garrett Vasquez reporting for the Blackhawk Buzz, now back to the studio. That's all we have for this week's episode. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at WF underscore BHB. If you want to rewatch any of your favorite BHB moments, check us out on the Blackhawk Buzz on YouTube. Have a great weekend, Blackhawks. Remember to tune in next week for an all-new episode of the Blackhawk Buzz. L is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. V is very, very extraordinary. E 
is even more than anyone that you adore.